Hi, Chris Green from GreenForceTactical.com. We're here at Knife Kit's DIY Lab, and today we're going to learn how to construct a pancake or two-piece gun holster. We're going to be using one of these molding props. So in order to accomplish that, we're going to use several basic hand tools. We're going to use a ruler to figure out where to cut. We're going to use a razor knife to score the kydex and break it. We're going to use a drill, a quarter inch drill, to drill some holes in it to put the eyelets through it and attach it together. And then we're going to use this flaring tool for flaring the eyelets and attaching the two sides of the holster to each other. So if you're ready, let's begin. So in order to construct the pancake style holster, we're going to need to cut two pieces of kydex. I'm using bubble gum and Tiffany blue. So we're going to need two pieces, and a good rule of thumb is a 6 inch by 8 inch piece will generally work for the front or the back of a pancake style holster. So I'm going to cut those two pieces and show you what that looks like. First we're going to cut the bubble gum. The bubble gum is going to be what we use for the front. It's going to be the bright, shiny, out front thing. So what we want to do is just come down the edge and mark 8 inches. Because this is a 12 inch wide piece, once we split it in half that will give us a six inch measurement. So we're just going to connect these two lines with the razor knife. I like to use a light pass for the first one to lay down a trail for the knife to follow. And then the subsequent second and the third one are easy to stay in the same place. It keeps you from getting off line. So now we'll take that scored line, we'll put it on the edge, we'll break it, and that will yield us a 12 inch by 8 inch piece. In order to break this down, it's a simple matter of measuring 6 inches to the center, making a mark, measuring 6 inches to the center, making a mark, and again, connecting them together with approximately 3 strokes of the razor knife. One, two, three. And if you do it that way, you'll never struggle with striking and breaking your kydex. So this will be our extra piece. This will be our working piece. And we're going to repeat that process with the other side, with the Tiffany side. We're just going to mark us off eight inches. And I know the mark will be hard to see with this white on the, on the blue, but I can see it just fine. So again, we're just going to connect these two marks that we made, yielding us a 8 inch measurement. And then we're going to split the 8 by 12 resultant piece into two 8 inch by 6 inch pieces. So again, it's going to be our spare piece. Now we're going to mark 6 inches and 6 inches again, and we'll be ready to go. And again, keep your marks as small as possible. This isn't rocket surgery, but you do want to have your marks be within an eighth or a sixteenth of where you want them to be. Again, we'll put it on the edge, break it, and we're good to go. So now, I'll show you how the resultant pieces will work out. This is approximately where they're going to end up on the pistol. So as you can see, we have plenty on both sides to make our connections, and we have plenty along the bottom, and we have plenty along the top to give us a good sweat guard. So the next step we're going to have in this process is we're going to heat this kydex up and bend it. So let's heat some kydex. Okay, now we're ready to heat up and mold. So let's go ahead and get some kydex warmed up. This is going to be for our pancake style holster, where we're going to sandwich the prop gun between two layers of plastic here, much as you would order flapjacks or pancakes. So again, Kydex has a textured side and a shiny side, and we're heating it. We want to heat it with the textured side up on both pieces, with the shiny side down against the rack, so that any marks that are left by the rack are left on the inside, not on the outside where they're visible. So what we'll do is we'll open the oven up, make sure the rack is in the middle so that we get even heating, put one to one side, one to the other side with a little bit of space between them so you get good airflow via convection. Shut the door, make sure it's set for a little over 300, and fire it up. Now, this is an excellent opportunity to talk about why we wear gloves.
we're going to be shooting before between 305 and 325 degrees. You wouldn't take anything out of your oven that was that hot with your bare hands. You wouldn't take an apple pie out with your bare hands. So try not to handle Kydex with your bare hands. Um, I prefer gloves that have a leather rather than a pleather fingertip. That way the plastic doesn't melt and hurt your fingers. You'll be able to handle the Kydex a lot more uh, assertively and with a lot more... Uh, uh, a lot more safety if you're wearing gloves. Don't try to handle it barehanded. Trust me, I've done it. It's not cool. So we need to talk a little bit about temperature sampling. When you're using a non-contact thermometer, and again, we're shooting for in excess of 300 degrees, the little red laser spot is where you're measuring. So you can't measure the glass from the outside because that's all you'll do is you'll measure the glass. It's 97 degrees. Now, if you go inside and measure the kydex, kydex is already up to 114 and 117 degrees. So when you're going to take your temperature, open it up, shoot it in a couple places to make sure you don't have a hot spot, and close the door. Let's talk about a little bit about speed. You want to make sure that everything that you need to do your mold is all ready to go before you start heating your Kydex. While your Kydex is heating, it's an excellent opportunity to check and make sure everything's like you think it is. Because once we start moving the Kydex from the oven, to the press, the faster we can do that, the better definition we'll get. As soon as we take it out of the oven and take it away from the heat source, the kydex will be cooling and coming back towards ambient. And we want to mold this stuff in excess of 300 degrees. So when you take it out, move it quickly to the press, get the press closed quickly, then you can have a snack. So we'll go ahead and take a chance here and see where we are. Something else to consider is you're going to want to rotate your kydex about halfway through, because there will be some uneven heating just because of the technology that we're using. So it's already a little soft. So we'll go ahead and take it out, spin it around, close it back up, give that about another minute or so. Now, depending on the wattage rating and the internal capacity of your toaster oven, your results are gonna vary. Some heat faster, some heat slower, it's just something you're going to have to experiment with and figure out how your equipment works and what works best for you. I'm not going to give any hard and fast times, but a few minutes. Another thing to do is always stay right here with your oven when you're working with it. Um, it's easy to get distracted in a shop, especially when you've got a lot of things going on. And if you forget about it and leave it in here, it's going to overheat and you're not going to be able to use it. So keep an eye on your Kydex. Don't wander away and sample it every few minutes and see where you are. So we're up to 234, 235. Every once in a while you get a crazy number, and that's because you've shot the metal, and you don't want to do that. Right. So based on those temperatures, we're at 246, so we've got about another 30, 30 to 45 seconds before we're ready to roll. And then we'll go ahead and get it in the press. The question is, we want the pink to the front, I'm sorry, the bubble gum, or do we want the Tiffany to the front? Now's the time to decide. Mmm, that second smell. 275, we're getting there. Won't be long now. You want to wipe the inside of your press and make sure you don't have any little dust balls or pieces of lint or anything because they will be embedded in your material once you squash it. Let's see what we got here. Real close. 290. Oh, so I'd say we're probably 10, 15 seconds away. We're going to pretend like it's going to be already already. When we open it up next time, I'll take my sample and uh, shoot the temperatures, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be where we need to be. So I think I'm going to go for a right-handed holster. I'm going to go with the pink to the back and the blue to the front. I think that's how we're going to go. So the pink's going to go down first, prop, molding prop will go on top of it, and then the, the uh, Tiffany blue will go on top of that and we'll close the press. So let's see where we are. And right on.
And again, it's like making pancakes. Put one flapjack down. Put your prop gun down. And then put your other piece of material on top of it. Let's go ahead and shut off the oven so we're not putting up with the heat. We've got the pancake holster in the uh, press. And we'll come back in about 15 minutes, let it come back to ambient, and see what we've got. And we're back. It's been about 15 minutes. Let's go and open the press and see what we've got. Sometimes the Kydex will stick to one side of the foam or the other, so when you're, when, you're taking, when you're opening the press up, be mindful that sometimes it may stick and you have to put your hand in there and separate the layers. It's just something you need to do. But if you look here, you'll see that we've got good definition around the trigger guard. We've got good definition down the muzzle, uh, the sight channel, and around the muzzle. And that continues over on the other side. You can clearly see all the detail work around the muzzle and around the trigger guard. And this area is particularly important because this is where we're going to get all of our retention in this area right here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some layout and put a series of eyelets right here. And that'll allow us to secure the front and back half of the pancake holster together. So let's go drill. Okay, so we're going to continue along with this pancake style holster that we molded for the Smith & Wesson shield. We're going to go ahead and place a line of three eyelets on either side, and I'll show you how the layout for that goes. On these smaller guns, what you like to do is measure from the trigger guard up about an inch. And I say about an inch because your mileage may vary. You may have to move it around a little bit. And then I'll lay the straight edge across the gun, transfer that mark over to here. So now I've got a parallel line that goes from one side all the way across to this side. And that'll make sure that my eyelets aren't out of whack with each other. So the next thing I'm going to do is just take my drill jig and place it on the holster like this. And all I'm going to do is clamp it off, make sure that your line of holes here is parallel to the, the bore of the gun, and it won't look janky. So I'll go ahead and put this other clamp on here now. And we're going to put three eyelet holes in it. That's all we're going to do. I'm going to spin it around here so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to drill these three eyelet holes. Again, you want to make absolutely certain that it's straight. You don't want any jankiness happening here. Jankiness is anything that's not straight. Hi, we're about halfway through the video, so I want to take a moment. If this seems like it's a little too much for you, or you just don't have the space, we'll be happy to build you a blaster scabbard or a knife sheath or whatever you'd like. Just hit us up on our website at greenforcetactical.com. Please follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, and on YouTube at Green Force Tactical. Again, we appreciate you watching. And enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you. So, jankiness can be an outer round hole. Jankiness can be a non-straight line. Jankiness can be just about anything that's a non-desirable condition. So we're only doing three here. So I'll go ahead and take the clamps off and show you what that looks like. And as you can see, it's pulled some colored material through here from the other side. But you've got three holes in a line, and they are parallel to the bore axis of the gun. That keeps it from looking weird. And it being an inch above here gives us plenty of room when we go to cut to come in here and leave us plenty of room over the top of the eyelet. Those are the considerations that you have to worry about is, are you going to be able to clear the hand the way you want to, and are you going to be able to mount the belt attach in a way that is both aesthetically pleasing and functional? So. We've got this, this drill guide is set up now where we can see that it's at the same height from here to here and the same height from here to here. And these two lines, this line, this line, and this line, these two are parallel to the bore axis of the gun. And that'll keep your holster from looking janky. I mean, you can do it any way you want. This is just the way Green Force Tactical does it so that our stuff doesn't look too weird. It's weird enough by design. Well, we'll put three holes in this side. Go ahead and remove the drill guide. Clean this off. And that's what we ended up with. We ended up with two sets of three on either side. The distance from here to here and here to here is the same. So these two lines are parallel and they're parallel to the bore axis of the gun. So 
Um, I hope that was helpful to you. And we're gonna move over now and go ahead and eyelet these at the eyelet press. And I'll show you how that goes. Okay, so we're back over here at the flaring press. And we're gonna continue on with this OWB holster that we're making pancake style for this Smith & Wesson shield. So again, the blue is gonna be the front side, pink's gonna be the back side. So we're gonna press our eyelets through from the front side, leaving the rolled side, or as we call it, the pretty side, to the front. The part that's gonna go through the rolling motion is gonna to be to the rear. So just take your, your eyelets, press them through from front to rear. If you meet any resistance, you can go ahead and back up and open it up and make sure you don't have anything in the way there. And one more. Now, when you're putting these eyelets in the dies, it's very easy to misunderstand which way they go. So it's gonna be easy for you. This is the part that's already finished. This is the part that's already rolled. This is the part that sticks up and hasn't been rolled. You want to put it in the die with the unrolled portion up into the spike. So all we'll do is set the rolled portion into the bottom die, ease the top down, and now I just I like to turn it just a little bit. And if you watch, the handle will drop a little bit, and that lets me know that everything's in alignment. And I'll just go ahead and press it. There's one. There's two. So we'll just continue like this in like fashion on both sides of the rig. And again, go ahead and give it a little wiggle, make sure everybody's happy before you roll it. Okay, and there we are. The front sides of them are nice and smooth. They're not scratched up. The back sides of them are fully rolled and none of them have any cracks. So that's really what you're going for when you're rolling eyelets is making them look like that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to the saw and we're gonna start cutting our final shape and getting this rig shaped up the way we want it. So I'll see you over there at the saw. Okay, here we are over at the saw with the Pancake OWB gun holster that we made for the Smith & Wesson shield. We're gonna go ahead and cut the basic final outline with the saw and then we'll finish it up with the sander. So let's see how that looks. blade was starting to bind up and rather than uh, risking the blade I went ahead and shut it down and backed the blade up by hand. trick if you're using a scroll saw is go ahead and hold it down against the deck. Whatever you've got to do, whatever edge you're working, go ahead and do what you've got to do to get it down on the deck. I'm going to keep from getting too crazy on you.
Okay, a few zigs and zags aside, this is going to be really close to our final shape. We'll go ahead and sand these edges in, sand this across the top, and I left plenty of material here that we can get the finger relief exactly like we want it. So uh, this is the OWV pancake style holster. Um, final form before sanding, and uh, let's go ahead and head over to the sander and see what she finishes up like. Okay, we're over here at the Kalamazoo Grinder, going to go ahead and put the finishing touches on this pancake style OWB holster that we're building for the Smith & Wesson Shield. So uh, let's get to it, shall we? Okay, let's take a quick look for check fit. All right, we've clearanced it for the hand. All right, don't mind my Kydex test, folks. It's a dusty job, but somebody's got to do it. So here's what your final finished form will look like. It's uh, had the corners rounded. It's had the bottom beveled. It's got a slash cut across the top, again, to facilitate ease of, re of reholstering. And it's got plenty of finger clearance here, so when you reholster, the holster doesn't bang into your fingers. So. Uh, Yes, we could take this a lot further and take it into a mirror polish situation, but uh, that's a procedure for another video, and we'll be doing that one real soon, and we hope you tune in. So uh, once again, Chris from GreenForceTactical.com reminding you to always be awesome and thanking you for showing up and watching our videos and inviting you to come back and join us again. Thanks.